guys, I'm not gonna lie, it is so hard to film intros and outros. Like, I just can't, like, I never know, I never know what to say. It's like, it's like embarrassing. <laughs> it's, just, it's just, it's so hard. I don't know why it's so hard. Hello everyone, um, happy Monday. I am here to bring you another free pattern. I have been working on this, like, I feel like for months and i just like keep on starting and stopping it like i just <laughs> never finish it i am here to give you uh the night um so i guess it's not technically the hollow night because uh, no spoilers but this is the night from hollow night so this is going to be a little bit of a longer pattern because i really try and break it down and go slow it, well i guess not slow <laughs> but I try and break it down and like show you exactly what I'm doing. I'm super excited about this pattern because I made it a while ago and it just never got to the pattern phase. So, so it finally has come to the pattern phase and like all of my other fan art, it's going to be free for you. So it is a bit of a longer pattern. Um, I do have the pattern in the description below, so you can check that out. Um, I would say, see, you probably could do this as a beginner, but this is probably more of an intermediate pattern. It does use some different stitches. There's a lot of like shaping elements to it, but like I really do try and make it easy to understand. So give it a go. Um, you know, just just try. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not gonna spend too much time chit-chatting about this because this is already a very long video, but I hope you guys like it. And um, of course, tag me in social media posts. I always love to see your guys' versions of, of this cutie. Um, I did do a needle as well, but I, I feel like I like freehanded it because the pattern that I wrote down just like does not work. So I might approach that in the future, <laughs> but I'm not too sure about that yet. But anyways, I hope you guys like this pattern and um, yeah, well, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with our yarn. So I'm using acrylic size four yarn. This is paint box simply Iran and it's in three different colors. So on the left to the right, it's granite gray paper white and pure black uh you can use any brand just try and keep it all the same brand so that they're all kind of like the same size so moving on we are going to need a 2.5 millimeter hook a tapestry needle some scissors we're also going to need some thread just some black sewing thread and then a sewing needle and some black felt also what I find helpful is using like these little sewing pins and lots of stuffing. And then we are also going to need a stitch marker. I find these little ones with like a clip um, is super helpful, but you can just use a piece of thread if you want. So to start, we are gonna take our white yarn and we are gonna make a magic circle. This is the way that I make my magic circles. I'm kind of <laughs> messing up quite a lot here, but I do have a tutorial on that. Um, and I kind of just make like this little loop, pull up a chain and then start putting stitches into it. So we're gonna make a magic circle of six here. If you wanna use the chain two and single crochet in second chain from hook, that's totally fine. It's just up to preference, but I just prefer the, the magic circle method. So I'm just gonna pull that close and just make sure to mark the end of your round some way. I like to mark the end if you wanna mark the beginning, that's totally fine. But we're gonna hop into round one and we're gonna increase times six. So we are going to do an increase into every single stitch and there's six of them. And then because we're putting two single crochets into one single crochet, we will get 12 stitches by the end of the round. Just finishing up this round, we'll have something like this. Make sure to replace your stitch marker so you know where you're at. And then we're gonna move into round two. And round two is gonna be similar, except we're going to single crochet and then increase. 
and we're going to do that combination of stitches six times so we'll do single crochet increase single crochet increase single crochet increase single crochet increase all the way around back to our stitch marker and so because we're doing that six times we are increasing six times and we will get a final stitch count of 18. Okay, so just finishing up this round and then we are going to move on to round three which is single crochet two and then increase and you're going to do that six times so single crochet two increase single crochet two increase and then by the end of that round you should have a total of 30 stitches so you can kind of see this pattern that we're doing of of going up six stitches every single time so we first started with just increasing all the way around six times and then single crochet increase six times now single crochet two increase six times so we're kind of just stepping up in this pattern so i'm sure you can guess what's next but we will wait until we get there just finishing up the last stitch here and this is what we've got so I have a total of 24 stitches in that round I'm just gonna place my stitch marker back and as promised round four is single crochet three increase and we're gonna do that six times so you're gonna go all the way around back to the beginning and you should have 30 stitches by the end so I just skipped ahead for you there you can pause if you need to and I'm just finishing up my round with 30 stitches in it now. So now we are going to move on to round five and we are going to do single crochet four increase. And we're going to do that six times. So hopefully you can see that pattern and we'll end up with 36 stitches at the end of the round. So I'm just going to pop ahead again. You can pause if you need to and I'm just going to finish up that last stitch. And then we'll move on to round six. And round six, um, you can probably guess, is single crochet five and then increase and do that pattern six times, giving us 42 stitches at the end. So again, I'm just gonna skip ahead and we are gonna finish up this round with 42 stitches. Now round seven, I'm gonna mix it up on you. So you thought it was gonna be single crochet six and then increase, but however, you can kind of see that we're starting to make this little hexagon shape and I don't like it. So we are going to try and figure out how to kind of round out these edges. You can see like the little points that are starting to form in a hexagon shape. So you can see the one point here and you can see that this is just where our increases are lining up. So we're gonna break that pattern and kind of shift it over by three. So this is a good spot to do it because we'll do single crochet three and then increase into the next stitch. So instead of doing six, we're gonna do single crochet three and then increase and now we're gonna do single crochet six and then increase so we're shifting where those increases are and they'll line up in the middle so you'll do single crochet six increase all the way around until you have three stitches left hopefully I've explained that well enough but we're just kind of shifting if you can imagine we're just shifting where those increases line up on our piece so i'm just kind of going around i'm not i'm not speeding through this part <laughs> just so you can kind of see how it's starting to look sometimes i need to count and make sure that i'm doing six stitches in fact um, but it, it should line up pretty much in between those little points
Okay, so I have one, two, three, four left. So I just need to do that last increase there. And now I have three stitches left. And I'm just gonna single crochet these last three stitches. So the pattern for this round is single crochet three, increase. And then you'll do single crochet six, increase times five. And then you'll do single crochet three at the end, leaving you with 48 stitches and kind of a rounder shape rather than a hexagon. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. Okay, so now for rounds eight through 20, we're just gonna straight single crochet around. So that's 48 stitches every single time from round eight through 20. So I will see you back after 13 rounds. Okay, so I have completed those 13 rounds and we have this little cup shape. And now we're gonna start decreasing and we're gonna decrease in the same way that we increased, if that makes sense. So for round 21, we are going to single crochet six and then decrease. And when I say decrease, I specifically mean the invisible decrease, which I will show you right here. So we'll single crochet our six and then we are going to pick up the front loops only of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. And this is the invisible decrease and it makes it just like a little bit difficult to see where your decreases lie. So we're gonna single crochet six, an invisible decrease, remember I use them interchangeably, single crochet six, decrease all the way around and this will give us 42 stitches at the end. So go ahead and pause because I'm going to jump ahead to the end of the round and I'm going to finish up my last invisible decrease here. So I'll have my last two stitches will be an invisible decrease. So I'll have 42 stitches at the end of this round. And now moving on to round 22, we are going to single crochet five and then de decrease. So kind of the same pattern work where we're gonna go six, five, four, three in between the decreases. Does that make sense? I hope I'm like saying this in a way that makes sense to you. But single crochet five decrease times six or all the way around. And this will leave us with a total of 36 stitches. So I'm gonna pop along and I'll meet you at the end of the round. So these are my last couple of stitches. I'm going to decrease in the last one and I will have my 36 stitches here. And then, you guessed it, we're gonna do single crochet four and then decrease. Um, and then we're gonna do that times six or all the way around. So single crochet four, decrease, single crochet four, decrease, single crochet four, decrease. And I will meet you all the way at the end. Okay, so I'm just finishing up this round here. This is round 23 and we should end with a total of 30 stitches. And then we are gonna move on to round 24 and it is going to be single crochet three decrease times six or all the way around. So I will meet you back at the end. Okay, just finishing up this last decrease. And here's where we're gonna take a little pause because we are going to, first of all, put your stitch marker back and we are gonna take some time and we are going to stuff the head. So I've already put some stuffing in here, but just like stuff it quite firmly, but not all the way to the top because we don't wanna catch any of that stuffing through the stitches that we're gonna make in the next round. So I like to kind of just stuff the edges first and then stuff the middle, but try not to go all the way because we are going to go back and we're going to kind of stuff again. So once you're done and once you feel comfortable that it's stuffed quite firmly, uh, then we can move on and start stitching again. Okay, so if you remember our last round of single crochet decrease, we're gonna do single crochet two decrease. And we're gonna do that all the way around. Um, so single crochet two decrease and doing that pattern times six. 
uh, which should give you 18 stitches at the end. So again, I'm gonna zoom right ahead and I'll meet you at the end of the round. Okay, so I'm just doing that last decrease. Remember, they're invisible decreases. And there we go. So you don't need to put your stitch marker back on because we are done with the head. We are going to just cut it leaving a couple of inches. I tend to just pull out the, the yarn and stick it in there because I, I don't really think it goes anywhere. And also, I put a little extra stuffing in on top so it, it doesn't really move and I'm not using this piece to sew in. You can knot it if you want or if it makes you feel better to like make a slip stitch at the end of the round. That's totally fine, but I'm just lazy, I guess. I don't know. Be lazy with me. So after you made sure that you've gotten all the sides and the edges, I like to kind of just give it a once over and make sure that I don't need any more stuffing. I give it a little squish and you should have something like this. So next we're going to be moving on to the horns and the horns are going to be made by making like two bumps and then crocheting them together. So we're going to start out with bump one and we are going to make a magic circle of six. Again, if you want to use the chain two and single crochet and second chain from hook, that's a mouthful, but you know um that's totally fine if you want to use that method but regardless get six stitches up in there so i need one more stitch to give me six stitches and i'm gonna pull that nice and tight to close it off and then make sure i add my stitch marker i probably didn't in this case because it's just six stitches but we are going to single crochet around all the way back to the beginning so you're going to single crochet six stitches until you get back to the beginning. I should have used my stitch marker here, but you know, hindsight, 2020. Um, yeah, you can see me messing up on stitches here, but that's totally fine. Uh, just uh, single crochet six all the way back. So there's my six stitches, and finally I grabbed my stitch marker, thank God. And then for round two, we are going to, again, single crochet six all the way around. So we're just going to do the exact same thing that we did last time, and we're going to do it again. Single crochet six all the way around, back to the beginning. And guess what? Round three is also identical, and we're going to do single crochet six all the way around. So just finishing up my last stitch here, my last single crochet. This is gonna be bump one. So we are going to take our scissors now and trim just a little bit, just enough so it doesn't fall out on us. And I'm gonna pull out the loop and then I'm gonna take the yarn tail from the center of the piece and I'm just gonna try and stuff it in there. I usually use the back of my crochet hook. Use whatever you can to just stuff that piece back in there. And then leave the other bit just kind of hanging there. So take this and put it off to the side. And now we're gonna make bump two. So we are gonna start out the exact same way and we are gonna make a magic circle of six. Again, same thing, magic circle of six. I love my magic circles of six. Um, and then I'm, we're going to pull that tight and we're going to continue on almost identical to the last one. So round one is going to be single crochet six <laughs> all the way back to the beginning. I don't know why I don't use my stitch marker here, but it's helpful to use your stitch marker on, on the last or the first, whichever one's your preference, uh, just so you know where the end of your round is or the beginning. And so round one was single crochet around and round two is also single crochet around. So single crochet six, all the way back to the beginning. So I'm just finishing up these last stitches and here's where we're gonna get a little bit crazy. Okay, a little bit wild. Uh, but bear with me, we are going to finish up that and we're going to have like a similar kind of bump, but not as big. 
So we're gonna take our first bump and you're gonna find the next stitch over from the last stitch that you made. So you can kind of pull the yarn and see where it is and go into the next stitch over. Just stick your hook in there. And then you're gonna pretty much single crochet right there. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. There you go. And we've attached them. So that is our first stitch of the round. And we are going to single crochet around both of these pieces, if that makes sense. So we had six stitches on our first bump, six stitches on our second bump, and we'll end up with 12 stitches total. Where it gets confusing is this last stitch. Just try and hold that yarn tail to the side and you can kind of see where the stitches are actually supposed to be. Just make sure you're going under both of those loops. And then you'll be going back on to that, that last bump that we made, technically bump two, and look for the stitch that doesn't have a stitch in it. Does that make sense? So you'll go over to this stitch because that one doesn't have a stitch in it yet. So you're gonna single crochet, and this is how you kind of attach two pieces together. And we're just gonna single crochet into every stitch that we find and we should have 12 stitches at the end of the round because we joined two pieces with sti six stitches each. I'm getting tongue-tied. So this is the last stitch and I'll have 12 stitches here. So you end up with something like this. There's gonna be a hole in the middle, that's totally fine. Just make sure that this yarn is on the outside. We'll fix it up later, don't worry. There's gonna be a bunch of strands, don't worry. We'll, we'll sort it all out. So for the next round, make sure you're going into the very first stitch and we are going to, again, single crochet around and this will be 12 stitches. So just make sure that you are finding each and every single stitch. Usually that first stitch is kind of tricky to find, but just be patient, take a good look. At least it's not black yarn, I hate black yarn. But um, this one's also a little bit hard to find. Just make sure you're looking for those like V's on top, like those two bars or the, those two lines on top of your piece and go under both of them. So go all the way around with your single crochets and you should have 12 at the end. Okay, so put back on your stitch marker once you're done and now we're gonna kind of take uh, a second I'm not gonna lie I did take a little break after this so it's gonna change in like two seconds but we are gonna start fixing up with all of these yarn tails so yeah just don't mind my awful transition there and we are going to take this yarn which is like the magic circle yarn tail and we're gonna kind of stuff it into one of those bumps and then we are going to figure out this little opening with the darning needle or whatever yarn needle and taking that yarn that's on the outside there so not our working yarn just like this cut yarn that we have from our first bump we're literally just gonna sew back and forth i i don't even know how to explain this just like i don't know seam it up <laughs> sew back and forth until the opening is kind of closed <laughs> and then you're gonna knot it at the end so if there's any like weird openings just like throw throw the yarn over there i don't i don't know just close it up the best way that you know how and then you're gonna just knot it and then hide the yarn tail in the piece and then we are also gonna tuck it in one of the bumps so I sometimes knot it once, I sometimes knot it twice. I don't think it's really gonna come out, especially if you're like bunching it up and throwing it somewhere, but do whatever you feel is right. So I'm just gonna bunch it and stick it in one of those little bumps and push it down <laughs> with my crochet hook. So you should have a higher bump and a lower bump. And now here's where we're gonna start some of the shaping. So for round five, we are going to single crochet three, and then we're gonna do a half double crochet. So I'm doing kind of the yarn under half double crochet, and I'm gonna half double crochet the next two stitches. So if you're doing yarn over, that's totally fine. Um, just make sure that it's consistent. So. I'm gonna do my two half double crochets and then I'm going to single crochet seven all the way back to the beginning and 
we're just kind of doing some shaping so that these horns start to curve but we should have 12 stitches at the end of all of these rounds okay it'll always be 12 okay so if you have to like count each time that's totally fine so that was just round five replace your stitch marker and we're going to move on to round six and round six is going to be single crochet three and then we are going to decrease and remember what i said about decrease they're always invisible decreases i just I, I have to i feel like i have to keep on saying that invisible decrease in that stitch and then we are going to single crochet four and then after the single crochet four we are going to increase and then we are going to single crochet two to the end. So when we decrease, we kind of make a curve inwards. And when we increase, we make a curve outwards. If that, it'll become more noticeable, trust me. So round seven and eight are gonna be identical. And we are going to single crochet three. And then we're gonna do a half double crochet and then another half double crochet. Two half double crochets here and then we are going to single crochet seven and this will take us all the way back to the beginning so just finishing up that last single crochet leaving us with 12 stitches and like I said, round eight is identical. We are going to do single crochet three and then two half double crochets and then single crochet seven all the way back to the beginning. Okay, so moving on to round nine, we are going to single crochet four, single crochet one, two, three, four, and then we are going to decrease, so invisible decrease, and then we're going to single crochet four again, so single crochet one, two, three, and single crochet four, and then we're going to increase, and then we're gonna do one final single crochet, leaving us with 12 stitches again. So rounds 10 and 11 are gonna be the same, and we are going to single crochet four, and then half double crochet two, then single crochet six back to the beginning. So there's my half double crochet two. And then single crochet six back to the beginning. So round 11, like I said, is gonna be exactly the same. You're gonna single crochet four, half double crochet two, single crochet six, back to the beginning. And again, always ending up with 12 stitches. So round 12 is going to be single crochet four. And then we're gonna decrease. So invisible decrease into the next two, two stitches there. 
and then we are going to single crochet five and then for our last stitch we are going to increase so don't mind me just messing up on my stitch here we're gonna do the single crochet five and then end off with the increase So for round 13, we are going to single crochet four, and then we're gonna half double crochet three, and then single crochet five. So finish off with your single crochet five all the way back to the beginning. off make sure you put your stitch marker back so for round 14 we are going to single crochet five and then we are going to half double crochet two and then single crochet five all the way back to the beginning Okay, so we're getting there, we're almost done. For round 15, we are gonna start out with an increase this time. Just because the stitches move towards the right, we've kind of gotten to the point where we have to start with this increase. And then we are going to single crochet five, and then we are going to decrease. making sure that that lines up but we are going to decrease there and then end off with single crochet four so again every single round is ending up with 12 stitches because we're like increasing on one side and then decreasing on the other now going into round 16 we are going to start out with single crochet six and then we are going to half double crochet four and then end off with single crochet two. Okay, so moving on to round 17, we are gonna slip stitch four. So those are just slip stitches here. One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna single crochet two. And then we're gonna half double crochet four. So this, this round's a little complicated. There is a reason, but just don't just don't think about it. Just just, just do it. So half double cro crochet those four stitches, and then finish off with a single crochet two. Okay, you literally made it. <laughs> How glad are you that that's done? And how upset are you that you're gonna have to do a second one of these? Um, so cut the yarn leaving, I don't know, maybe eight to 10 inches and then just pull out that loop. If you want to slip stitch at the end, that's totally fine. And then just take some stuffing and stuff up the horn there. I like to stuff it firmly just so it has some structure to it. Um, but just do kind of whatever you're comfortable with. 
so just let it have a little bit of a squish at least and you can see that there is like this curve to it so that's great that's pretty much all of that increasing and decreasing that we did to kind of make that nice curve for the horn okay so now you just have to repeat those steps all over again so pause here go back to the horn and do it again Okay, so once you're done your second horn, we're gonna move on to the legs and the body. So take your black yarn and make your magic circle. Again, you're gonna make a magic circle of six as is tradition around here. Um, so make your magic circle of six and then pull that uh, magic circle closed. So for round one, we are going to single crochet around. So look at me, I got my stitch marker this time. Uh, so you're gonna single crochet six all the way around back to your stitch marker. So you'll have a final stitch count of six. Moving on to round two, we are going to single crochet and then increase. We're gonna do that combination three times, which will leave us with nine stitches at the end. So single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, and then single crochet, increase. So you'll have the three increases that you've made, which give you nine stitches at the end. So moving on to round three, we are just going to straight single crochet all the way around. So single crochet nine stitches all the way back to the beginning. Round four is going to be single crochet two and then increase, and you're gonna do that pattern three times. So you should have 12 stitches at the end. So I'm just replacing my stitch marker and now I'm gonna move on to round five. And round five is just going to be a straight single crochet round. So you're just going to single crochet 12 stitches all the way around. Okay, so once we're done with that round, we're gonna take our scissors and we're just gonna cut a small tail. It doesn't have to be too long. We're gonna pull out that loop and that's basically the first leg. So we're essentially going to kind of tuck this one off to the side and we are going to do an exact replica of what we just did um, and we're gonna make the second leg. So we're gonna start off with that magic circle again and do a magic circle of six. gonna pull that tight and then I'm gonna move into round one and round one is just going to be single crocheting around so we are going to single crochet six all the way around Okay, 
Okay, so just putting my stitch marker back on and round two is gonna be an increase round. So we are going to single crochet and then increase in the next stitch over and we're gonna do that pattern three times around. So it'll be single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, all the way back to our stitch marker. And at the end of this round, we should have nine stitches because we added three stitches. We increased three times. So now we have nine. Okay, so round three is going to just be a straight single crochet round. You're gonna single crochet nine stitches all the way around. Okay, moving on to round four, we're gonna do an increase round here and we are going to single crochet two stitches and then we are going to increase. So single crochet two, increase. And we're gonna do that combination three times. So we're gonna have 12 stitches at the end of the round. So you'll do single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet, increase. Okay, so for round five, we are going to single crochet all the way around. So single crocheting 12 stitches all the way back to your stitch marker. Okay, so this time we are going to put our stitch marker back onto our piece and we're not going to cut the yarn. So this is our second leg. I'm just going to tuck those yarn tails in here. So this is technically our second leg and this one is our first leg. So we're going to work on attaching these together. And to do that, I know it's difficult to see with the black yarn, but you're going to take the stitch after the last stitch that you made on the first leg. Just like if you were to continue crocheting, you'd go into that stitch and you're just going to put a single crochet there. And then you're just going to work around single crocheting in each stitch all the way back to your stitch marker. Okay, so now we're getting close to kind of that end yarn tail that's kind of just floating there. You wanna make sure that you go into the last stitch. So there should be 12 stitches on the first leg that we made. So make sure you have 12 stitches starting from after that stitch marker. And then we're gonna go into the second leg and we're gonna go to the stitch after the one that we came off of when we were making the second leg. Hopefully that makes sense. So you're gonna do 12 stitches around the first leg and then 12 stitches around the second leg and back to the stitch marker. Okay, so just working on this last stitch. So you should have the 24 stitches all the way around. If you wanna pause here and give your project a count just to make sure that you are on the right track, that would be a good idea. And it is totally fine that there is like a hole in the middle between the legs. Just don't think about it. Don't worry about it. We'll, f we'll figure it out and we'll fix it later. That's kind of, the only thing the only thing i say is to pull that yarn out from that first leg uh, to the outside of the piece it just makes it easier later um, but we are gonna move on to basically round seven because round six was co like crocheting the legs together and then round seven is going to be 
our increase round. So we are going to single crochet five and then increase. So uh, we're gonna do that four times all the way around and we should have 28 stitches at the end of the round. So I'm just gonna skip ahead and I'll meet you back at the end. Okay, so just finishing up my last increase here. So I'll have 28 stitches here and you should kind of have something that looks a little bit like pants. Okay, so for the next uh, six rounds from round eight through 13, we're just gonna straight single crochet all the way around. So 28 stitches in each round uh, for six rounds. I'm gonna skip ahead because it's boring and I'll meet you back at the end. Check out that movie magic. Okay, so you should have something like this at the end of your six rounds. You'll still have 28 stitches. We haven't increased or decreased, but we are gonna take a little break from crocheting here and we're gonna deal with that random gap in between the legs. You're gonna take your yarn needle and basically you're just gonna sew back and forth to close it. Like, I might be lazy, but I'll just go under fine stitches just kind of close up that hole that's probably super lazy but you can like i there's no method to this madness i kind of just you know split them apart and then sew it up <laughs> and then at the very end i just put a little uh knot and then i hide the yarn tail through the piece and then i'll tuck the yarn tail into one of the legs All right, so this is what we have now. Just some legs turning into a body and we're gonna put our stitch marker back on and we are going to single crochet five and then decrease. And we're gonna do that combination four times around. And the way that we're gonna decrease is the invisible decrease. So we are gonna pick up the front loop only of the next two stitches over yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through both and we are going to just do that combination of single crochet five and then invisible decrease four times around total and we should end up with 24 stitches at the end okay so just skipping right along i am going to my last invisible decrease of this round and again i should have 24 stitches at the end of this round Make sure you put your stitch marker back on. And for the next two rounds, so rounds 15 and 16, we are going to straight single crochet all the way around and that's 24 stitches a piece. So I am gonna whip right ahead and meet you at the end. Okay, so now I've finished those two rounds, I'm gonna start stuffing. So grab your polyester stuffing and I like to stuff the legs first and you can see that I'm pushing it kind of like, like not stuffing it in sections. Like I'm trying to pull the, like the stuffing up along the sides of the piece. So it's not just like chunks that go in together. Like it's kind of like a whole like string of stuffing that like leads up the leg. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm just like rambling, but I hope that makes sense. You're just gonna kind of stuff it, just stuff it. Just, <laughs> I'm trying to explain how to stuff legs. So this is weird. Okay, so after you've stuffed them thoroughly, you want them to be like nice and firm, uh, but not too firm and you don't want the stuffing to be like, you know, going over the top of your piece. So just enough to kind of fill out the legs a little bit. We are gonna move on to round 17, and round 17 is going to be single crochet four and then invisible decrease. You're gonna do that combination four times around. So I'm gonna meet you back at the end. Okay, so just finishing up my last invisible decrease, trying not to get any stuffing in my stitches and you should have 20 stitches at the end of this round 
and we are going to move on to round 18 and 19. So these are the same and we are going to single crochet around and this will be 20 stitches. So round 18 and 19, single crochet around or 20 stitches a piece. I jumped ahead. You can pause if you'd like. And this is my last stitch. And we are going to move on to round 20. So round 20 will be single crocheting three and then invisible decrease. And you're going to do that four times around. And you should have 16 stitches at the end of that round. So I'm going to jump ahead to the end of the round again right here. And we should have 16 stitches here. So our last round will be round 21 and round 21 is just going to be single crocheting around. So single crochet 16 stitches all the way back to your marker. Okay, jumping ahead to the end of this round, we're just going to finish off the piece by essentially like pulling up that loop and then we are going to give like a good amount of of yarn uh, for sewing in later. Like you'll need to sew in each and every one of those stitches. Um, so depending on the yarn that you're using, you might need a little more or a little less, but just enough to sew in each of the stitches. And then we are going to stuff the rest of the way. It's just easier to stuff halfway and then stuff the rest of the way because it's you just don't have to go as deep. <laughs> but you're gonna stuff this quite firmly because you want him to be able to like stand up a little bit. So give him a good stuffing. I use quite a bit. Okay, you should have your body done now. And so the next step that we're gonna do is we're going to sew the body to the head. And the way that we're gonna do this is by taking the head and kind of lining up the edges. You see how like there's where the yarn is coming from, from the head and then the yarn coming from the body. I like to line those up and then we're gonna stitch in every single stitch. And the way that I do that is I go under and out one of those little stitches there. So not technically the front loop and the back loop of the stitch on the head, but I use the front loop and back loop on the body. So kind of under there and then back to the body and I go under both loops of the body stitch and so you're just gonna sew each of the stitches from the body to the head all the way around so i'm gonna skip ahead just because this part's monotonous as well and i just have a couple of stitches left and we are going to stuff the neck area because the worst part about amigurumi is floppy necks so I like to stuff up and down, up on the head and down on the body to make sure that it's got like a nice structure to the neck. So I just give like a lot of stuffing in this area because I want, I don't want them to be floppy around. Okay, so once you're happy with all of that stuffing, we are going to sew the remaining stitches in. So grab your yarn needle again and just sew the remaining stitches from the body onto the head and try not to grab too much of that stuffing. Sometimes it can pull while you're sewing it in. So just, you know, try and be mindful of that as you're going along and just make sure your stitches are nice and tight as you go around. Okay, so just finishing up here with a little knot and then I am going to hide the yarn tail through the piece at the end. So this is what it looks like. I need to put a little knot in there and then we will kind of stick our, our yarn kind of wherever. <laughs> just make sure that's nice and tight of a knot and then hide your yarn tail. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our little horns. So the horns are kind of shaped in a way already that curves. So you're gonna curve them inwards, I guess, right? That's inwards. 
curve them inwards towards the head i'm like whispering to myself to make sure it makes sense um i like to use little pins here just to make sure that i can like visualize both of them at the same time and that they don't move around on me i use the legs as a reference to make sure because you want the legs to be like front facing and you also want the horns to be front facing so it's pretty crucial for you to look down at the legs you know just making sure that they line up all the time Okay, so once you're happy with the placement, we are just going to take our yarn tail for one of them and we are going to sew in the horns on either side of the head, paying attention to making sure that they're not moving or budging anywhere because then we'll have like a head that's on an angle and looking left or right from the body. So just sew each one of the stitches from the horn to the head, just like very similar to how we did the body. So we're gonna stop a couple of stitches away from the end and we're just going to stuff a little bit extra into these horns just to make sure that they don't get floppy as well. So go ahead and give it a stuff and then you can finish sewing in those last few stitches. So at the end, we're just gonna knot and then hide the yarn tail through the piece. I don't cut the yarn at this point just because I'm not sure if that's where I'm gonna keep it. So I'll just move on to sewing in the next horn and I'll meet you back after I've done that. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with this and we are just going to snip them now. The reason why I leave them is in case I wanna move them. <laughs> it's just easier with a longer thread. So I'm just gonna trim all of my threads now and this is what we've got. Um, and I'm just pulling off the little fibers and making sure that he's nice and squishy and I like the shape of him. Okay, so if you wanna take a break here, that'd be great but we are moving on to the cape and we are going to use our gray yarn and we are going to make a slip knot and chain 20. so i'm just going to go along and chain my 20 stitches all the way down So here's my chain of 20 stitches. And now we're gonna be working back and forth in rows. So starting in the second chain from the hook, we are going to single crochet down the chain. So you're just gonna work down the chain with 19 stitches. So I'm gonna just speed along and I'll meet you back when I'm done. Okay, so just on my last couple of stitches here. So this will be my 19th stitch. And then we are going to chain and then we are going to turn. So we are working in rows, not rounds. So we're gonna make a chain here and then we're gonna kinda just flip it this way so we're on the wrong side of the piece now. So starting in the second stitch from the hook, so not the chain, the actual stitch, and in the back loop only, we are going to back loop only single crochet 18 stitches all the way down. And it shouldn't line up with your last stitch. So I'll show you right at the end here. So give it a pause, I'll meet you at the end. Right here, we are not gonna go all the way to the end. There's still one more stitch, our 19th stitch, but you're gonna leave it, just leave it there, okay? You're gonna do ch a chain two, so two chains there, and then we are going to turn. 
and then we are going to back loop only single crochet starting in the second the second stitch from the hook back loop only single crochet all the way back down 18 stitches so I'm just gonna meet you at the end of this round of back loop only single crocheting, which is right here. And we're gonna go all the way to the end cause that will be our 19 single crochets all the way down, starting in the second chain from the hook. And we are gonna do this pattern where round two is in the back loop only single crocheting 18, chaining two and then turn. And then round three, We'll be starting in the second chain from hook, single crochet, then back loop only, single crochet, 18, all the way down, chain and turn. I've put the pattern in the description, so refer to that. Um, but we're gonna do that pattern uh, until there are 15 points or enough to wrap around the entire body. So I like to just check it against the body just to make sure that I like the length just after I've done a few uh, rows, but we are gonna keep chugging along. So I have gone ahead and I have crocheted up those 15 points and I've cut a really long yarn tail, uh, which we're gonna use to sew in. And you can see these are my 15 points that I was talking about. Um, I, it really depends on how big your piece is, so I can't really tell you the length of it, but it should be enough to like wrap around the entire body with some overlap. So grab your yarn needle and thread that on, and then grab the body, and we're just going to start positioning it kind of how we like it. So I've designed this with some overlap in the piece. So I'm going to put the right side and pin it first, and then the left side over top and see how that looks if i need to move it at all then i do that at this point in time but i do overlap it so then there's like an opening that's a v and then i kind of just position move it around see if i like it um, this part takes a little while and then i'm just gonna pin all the way around the body so that it doesn't shift on me so we're just gonna go ahead and pin and then i open up this flap again and the reason why I do that is because I need to access the piece below. And we are going to sew in the cape now by just kind of picking up, honestly, I don't even know how to do this properly. I kind of pick up each row and stitch it to the head. And I don't do it, I don't stitch it to the head where the connection of the body and head is, I do it like around further on the head. So it's not over top of the seam that we already made. It's like more on the head. Does that make sense? So I'm just gonna like, I'm, I don't even, <laughs> is this cheating that I don't really know how to stitch things in? I just kind of put it in places. <laughs> Like I'm just kind of going around and I'm not pulling the piece too far away from kind of where it's naturally sitting. And I'm just picking up every round or row and stitching it in. So I'm just gonna move along doing that. So just give it a pause and I will meet you at the end. Okay, just putting in my last couple of stitches here, making sure that I'm maintaining that overlap and that V shape at the bottom of the cape is still there. Um, I'm just gonna take out all of my pins now. And we're just gonna make sure that it looks exactly how we want it before cutting the yarn, knotting it finally. We wanna make sure that everything is in the right place before we're done with it. So I think I'm happy with it here. And I'm just gonna kind of stretch this over and make a knot overlapping the other side of the cape. Um, I just wanna make sure that you maintain that overlap or else it looks a little bit wonky. But I'm gonna just make my nice knot here and then I'll hide the yarn tail through the piece after I'm done. Hiding the yarn tail through the piece and out the other side. And then because I also have that yarn tail from the beginning, we are going to hide that yarn tail through the piece as well. Okay, so if you are happy, you can take your scissors and trim those ends off. 
and now we have something like this where we have our opening of the cape and everything kind of lines up in the middle if it doesn't line up exactly in the middle it's totally fine because mine doesn't actually line up exactly in the middle so we are going to cut out two felt pieces now and they are going to be about an inch and a quarter so about 33 millimeters in diameter um, and then we are going to take these black circles and we are going to use them as eyes um, so you need to pin these into place just to make sure they're in the right spot before sewing them in with a needle i take a lot of time moving and adjusting and positioning um, it's always better to take your time on this part so I've just added a couple more pins and I'm going to take some sewing thread, some black sewing thread and a sewing needle and we are just going to whip stitch these round circles into place. So I kind of start off by going through the felt and then back down into the head. I don't tie it off or make a knot to start. I just kind of hold that loose yarn tail in as I move and work my way around. So I've kind of zoomed in a little bit so you can see that I'm just literally whip stitching around and securing this into place. And just try not to sew too far away from the actual felt piece because then you can see the little lines from the thread. So I'm gonna kind of move along nice and quick and because it's, it's literally just whip stitching. I believe in you, you can do this. You can do this. Just make sure it's nice and tight and not super loose. So when we go all the way around and back to the end, I just use the yarn tails from the, both of the ends and just tie them together. This is why I didn't, you know, knot the first one because I just tie them together at the end. So I just do a double knot with both of those ends and then I take out the um, pins once I'm done and then you can take your yarn needle and hide the yarn tails through the piece and then trim the excess and then you can just move along and you can sew in the other eye in the exact same way and then you'll have both of them that look like this so that is our little hollow knight you're done that's it that's all that's all there is i you did it you made it through however long this video turns out to be i think he's super cute and um i think he's worthwhile i think he's worthwhile look at him i mean he's a little bit let's just don't look at the cape too much because i just didn't do it evenly but I think he's super cute and he kind of does stand up a little bit you do need a prop for him but there you go what a cutie Okay, I hope you guys made it through and you like this pattern I enjoyed making this pattern it was kind of one of those patterns that kind of you know, I was in a little bit of a funk and it kind of brought me back because I made this pattern a while ago. So I am so glad to get it out to you guys. Of course, tag me in Instagram or TikTok posts or wherever. I always love to see your guys' stuff. Um, it also helps me grow a little bit too um, and get these free patterns out and helps me make more patterns. So I really appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!